Ahamasmi Sada Bhami. The word Sada goes with all of the things in the first line. Aham Sada Asmi or Sada Ahamasmi. Sada means what? Always. Sada Ahamasmi. I always am. Sada Aham Bhami. I always know that I am self-aware of the fact that I am is Bhami. I shine. I am and I know I am so that knowingness of my being, beingness is called Bhami, shining, awareness. Kadachit, at any time, Na aham apriyaha. The I that is being talked about here is something we have to become familiar with and start to own up, assimilate. Because the I that is talked about here is indeed dearly beloved. Really beloved. Because that's what I want to be. I want to be loved by all. And why do I want to be loved by all? Because I'm already loved by all. <laughs> and I don't yet know it. I don't yet know how to embrace that. And then, so therefore, kadachit na aham 
प्रिया सर द फर्स्ट लाइन नीड्स सम बैकग्राउंड एंड एक्सप्लेनेशन बिकॉज इट्स अ वेरी रेडिकल स्टेटमेंट हियर देर इज नो श्वेत केतु देर इज नो उदालक देर आर नो पार्ट एंड क्ले देर आर नो ऑर्नमेंट्स और गोल्ड देर आर नो एग्जाम्पल्स टू असिमिलेट दिस ट्रूथ एंड देर इज नो उदालक टू से सदैव सौम्य इदम अग्रे आसी तत्व आसी थ्रेश होल्ड ऑफ मननम निधि so if if it is seen as an idhyasanam then we enjoy the nectar and if it is seen as mananam then we are actively engaged in doubt removal this is the idea but how can i say aham sada asmi how oh, how can i say i am always i have a birth date i was born on that particular day even why me even rama has birth date we celebrated in the beginning of april <laughs> rama navami even rama has birth date krishna's birth day will come in august like that we have everybody has a birth date so how can i say i was before i was born that seems very silly and tikakara swayam prakashayati puts a, you know in, in just three sentences he explains this very very well and uh, he says he just asks a simple question what is it that is born what is born body is born. from the five elements even from the standpoint of the body i can't say i am born because the five elements were there or not yes, yes. so i can't really say you know i was born but okay granted let us let us give this you know jiva 1 atma 0 okay in this <laughs> let us give it to the jiva okay claim the birth i am born all right i was born <laughs> then you have to do a little bit of vichara here and what is the vichara what is it that is born five elements a collection or a some kind of a modified collection of the five elements at a particular place at a particular time remember we talked about the anupalabdhi pramana the cognition of absence this is here the cognition of the presence of these five elements with in relation to a particular upadhi and as though conditioner don't think of shampoo okay yeah that that that's not the conditioner we are talking about yeah so and as though agent that a, a, an agent that as though appears to condition this limitless i which is of the nature of ananda which is of the nature of satchidananda it as though funnels it into this small body mind sense complex small body tiny buddhi no. <laughs> because they are still here studying this and then, <laughs> and then what else you know so senses etc that's why if you look at a 2 year old it doesn't it's still not understanding that i am not sachidananda in this body. i am sachidananda but i am in this body it's not understanding the 2 year old is just i can do this i want to do this it can't even tie its own shoes but i me myself it's the only ahankara the only ego that is there me 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 nobody else exists 
the whole world is mine. I am the monarch of all I survey. <laughs> There's a poem that starts like that. Forgot who wrote it. Tell me afterwards. Google and tell me. Not now, okay? Yeah. <laughs> now Googling. So... <laughs> So maybe it was Longfellow or something. Anyway, you can tell me afterwards. So, and then the the two year in the two year old, you see this when he thinks I, I can run the whole universe. I'm Ishvara. You see this. And then falls flat on the face. Ah, ah, me. <laughs> That's when the upadhi starts to predominate. And then the identification with the upadhi is, 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 it takes place. It's a little amorphous at birth. The child doesn't know of who, you know. Still the child knows I am. What is missing is the mode of expression. Child cannot say, Aham Sada Asmi. <laughs> if you have a child like that, that says that, immediately give it to an ashram. All right? Because that child does not belong with you. <laughs> Take it to the Guru and put it at the feet of the, the Guru. Immediately. Do not bond with such a child. Yes. So... <laughs> Child is not going to say, Aham Sada Asmi. What is going to, it's going to Sada cry. Okay. That is, its, that is its way of saying Sada Aham Asmi. But you don't remember. I was that crying child. You don't remember. Your parents will remember. Okay. Yeah. The parents will remember and they will tell that you never stop crying. <laughs> See, you have to take it in a nice way. You were a mumukshu from birth. Yes, that's why you were crying. Why am I here? When is my time to study going to come? <laughs> Even though you don't remember and have no memories, you will bring me a photograph of you as a baby. That is me. <laughs> Who told you? What is you? No, I know that's me. Somebody told me, but I identify with this photograph. The small, torn, ancient photograph, you will tell. Gray me, you will show me and say, this is me. You won't say, this was me. See this? Mm -hmm. ah, this is me. Ah, must be. <laughs> The me in us me is, is in English. Okay, yeah. <laughs> this is me. And what will I say? I will look at the grainy photograph. <laughs> then I will say, I can see the similarity. <laughs> that time also you had no teeth and no hair. <laughs> now also you have no teeth, no hair. Yes, it must be you only. <laughs> Ahamasmi, the mode of expression is, uh, is uh, not there. It's a different mode of expression because the medium of expression has to grow into this adult. The child just makes itself known in the only way it knows how. Cries, cries, cries. Ahamasmi. Sada Ahamasmi. And then what? But then, what about all the animals? They don't say Sada Ahamasmi. Again, Upadhi Bhedat. Because of Upadhi, they don't say. If they could, they would. They don't, they cannot speak. But even that asmita, the existence, 
the existence, that astitvam, even in the dog, cat, donkey, down to the smallest little micro, declares itself to be ever present, like the coronavirus. <laughs> Corona says, Aham sada asmi, deal with me. <laughs> Vaccinations and boosters later, I still predominate. Aham sada asmi. See, even that thing it, it says in its own way. How does it say? By making one non functional. Yes. <laughs> Somebody was supposed to come and then wrote a letter. Sorry, I came down with COVID. <laughs> so, sada aham asmi. Even from the tiniest of microbes to the biggest of animals. Right now, I suppose it's elephant. Ahamasmi, ahamasmi, ahamasmi. I am, I am, I am, I am, I am. Jiva is getting restless. Jiva wants to mount a defense. Aha! <laughs> Nanu. What is Nanu? Objection. <laughs> Mr. Nanu has come out. Then the jiva says, gotcha. That's what the jiva does. Why gotcha? Because gotcha means you got you. Meaning you, you, you cannot stand this, this objection I'm about to mount. <laughs> What about in sleep? What about in dream? I don't say ahamasmi. In dream, I don't even know I am or not until the alarm rings. Then I say, curse this schedule. Who, whose idea it was to have classes at seven? <laughs> <laughs> But until then, I don't know that I exist. I have no clue. I'm happily asleep. I don't even know that I'm asleep. So shall I, on the scoreboard, shall I put Jiva to Brahman zero? <laughs> not yet, not so fast. Put the chalk down. Yes, you are partially correct. That's the problem with the jiva. It's always partially correct. <laughs> Little knowledge it has, which is dangerous because it is not completely understanding the truth of itself. So, partially correct. Partially correct means what? You don't know you are existent in sleep. Correct. But then when you wake up, what do you know? Do you say the neighbor was asleep, not me? No. You identify with the sleep state. In fact, even in the sleep state, you are identified with the sleep state. That is why you don't know anything because the sleep state is characterized by not knowing anything. That is the sleep state. The sleep state is the lakshana of the sleep state is oneness with Ishvara. And you are in a default oneness with Ishvara because you are not aware of that. You are not aware of that oneness. But still that oneness is a what? Desired oneness or an undesired oneness? Desired oneness. One is happiest in sleep. Even if you say I am not happiest in sleep, Ask your family members. They are happy when you are asleep. Because they don't you don't complain when you are asleep. So that shows you are happy in sleep. In sleep you are the happiest. In sleep there is what? Ananda. Because the complaining jiva is taking a holiday, an eight-hour holiday, a seven-hour holiday. And in class, a 15-minute holiday. <laughs> <laughs> it 
in your favor. They say micro napping is the latest trend. <laughs> <laughs> it's becoming viral. <laughs> Supposed to make one very energized afterwards, like a battery. What is that called? Energizer battery. Yeah. Even the computer goes in sleep mode, unless otherwise told. So, in sleep, you are very much there. Just like the animal cannot say, I am there. Just like the baby cannot declare its existence clearly by saying, aham sada asmi. In the same way, in sleep, the sukshma sharira is not there. The subtle body is not there to say, I am. But the amness, if I can call it that, is very much there. Because you wake up and you identify with the sleeping person in hindsight. You say, I was the one who is asleep, who was asleep. And you also say it was a fantastic sleep. Why was it a fantastic sleep? Because I did not know anything, including the, uh, the fact that I am, I did not know. What about dream? Dream also, same thing. In dream, there is ardha vikasa, a kind of a half awareness. There is no external awareness in the dream. Neither is there, very rarely there might be, like uh, it's called lucid dreaming, neither is there the awareness I am dreaming, except in certain small cases. No awareness in dream, no awareness in sleep. Then what's the difference between the sleep state and the dream state? In the dream state, there is ardha vikasam. I am relating to the subtle universe. What is this subtle universe? <laughs> Subtle universe made up of my own memories and my own desires. I'm completely solipsistic in the dream state. I am playing with my own memories and my own desires. What are these memories and desires? They are Lego blocks with which I'm creating a universe. A dream universe. The problem is I can't let go of them. <laughs> I'm creating a dream universe. In the dream, I'm putting these blocks. Based on what? What is the one, what is the impetus to create in the dream? My own desire. What is the, 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 Building blocks of this dream. Raw material of the dream is what? My own memories. And then I build a dream world in with which I identify. Who is it that's building the dream world? I are you there or not there pervading the entire dream world and all the things in it, all the memories, all the desires, all the people, everything that you dream of? Yes, yeah. I pervade the dream world. I am with the dream world. I am one with the dream world. It's almost like a, there is a split awareness. One part identifies with the objects and one part identifies with the dreamer because when I remember the dream and write it down when I wake up in the morning, that sakshita is still there. Aham sada asmi. Sada aham asmi. And bhami is the expression of asmi is the awareness of my being is what is called Bhami. There are two kinds of things in the universe.
things that are known through a means of knowledge. We have talked a lot about the means of knowledge yesterday. And what are they? They are called Pramana Siddha. Sunni, the, all the things are what? Pramana Siddha. Known by a means of knowledge. That includes the entire universe of names and forms starting with my own body-mind-sense complex. Pramana Siddha. My hand. Pramana Siddha. Leg. Pramana Siddha. <clears throat> body. Pramana Siddha. Oh, I'm having some thoughts in the, in the buddhi. Pramana Siddha. My mind is restless. Pramana Siddha. What is the Pramana here? Sakshi Pratyaksha. It is Pratyaksha, but it's an internal witnessing. I am hungry. Pramana Siddha. Again through Sakshi Pratyaksha. Sometimes it is through Pratyaksha also. Kuru Kuru Kuru. Stomach will say. Kuru Kuru Kuru. Okay. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> the ears cognize <laughs> the hunger. <laughs> so, this is all Siddha. It's, everything is known to me through a Pramana. The existence of other bodies in the room known to me through a Pramana. The existence of things that are difficult to quantify, difficult to objectify, like space, Known through me, through a pramana. Again, Sakshi Pratyaksha, space and time. Time, known through me, to a, through a pramana. Through a means of knowledge. Some distant galaxy, far, far, far away. From where? From me. From where this body-mind-sense complex sits. That also is known through a pramana called inference. Multi-step inference, Arthapatti. And the, now the James Telescope, James Webb Telescope. Has the retired Hubble. Yes. Hubble should be renamed Hobble. Because it just hobbles in front of this one. This one is so, it can see things that were always there, but where we have not cognized. And even the things that it cannot see. It senses. And astronomy has advanced so much that just by the information of the heavenly bodies surrounding something and the, by the information of the atmosphere, one can deduce, infer the existence of a planetary body there. Not only can you infer because of the gravitational force and the atmospheric pressure, not only can they infer that there is a body there, they can infer whether it is able to host life or not. This is fascinating. They can look at the weather. They can look at the, the presence of water because water is important for life. And the thickness of the atmosphere decides whether there is oxygen or not in a breathable form. And how far it is from its sun, that also they can infer, even though they cannot really see it. And then they can declare this to be this many light years away from the earth in the habitable zone which is called Goldilocks zone. Why? <laughs> the planet is neither too hot nor too cold. What does that mean for us? We can continue to destroy this planet, my friends, because then we can migrate over there. <laughs> this is exactly why they are looking for life. Uh, uh, not life. They are not interested in looking for life. They are looking for habitable planets. All this is evident to me through a means of knowledge. Black hole, evident to me. That the black hole swallows up everything. 
evident to me. No, 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 wait. It, it, it allows some radiation to go through. That's why it's called Hawking's radiation. Stephen Hawking's discovered this. That also evident to me. Through a means of knowledge. The whole universe, including the subtlest of mechanisms, evident to me. What about I? Huh? All universe is evident to me through a means of knowledge. What about I? Evident to me through a means of knowledge, correct? Yeah. Watch out, there can be sudden quizzes in <laughs> I is evident to me, but not, it is not Pramana Siddha. The whole, so this is the two categories of things evident to me. One is Pramana Siddha, the other is what? Swatas Siddha, self evident. So, how many other things are self evident? Nothing else. That's why Aham Sada Bhami. I am the self effulgent, self evident self. In fact, Vedanta does not uh, does not establish the presence of the I. It removes the wrong conclusions that come that are attached to this I due to self-ignorance. The I has been and was and continues to be what? Self-shining, self-evident. It's the only thing that is not Pramana Siddha. So that the I can operate other Pramanas. So everything in the universe is evident to me I am evident to myself. Sada Bhami. And that Sada, again, you can say in, in youth, childhood, youth, old age, Sada. And also you can say, we, since we have already gone through this, I will not go through this again in deep sleep, dream, and waking stage. Sada Bhami. I am. I am. I am. The I am is like a background knowledge which is constantly there like a Shruti in the Indian music concert. There is one Tanpura, a stringed uh, instrument. In both Hindustani music and Carnatic music, South Indian, North Indian, doesn't matter. There is this Tanpura. And it will play the primary notes of that particular raga that the composer, the, the, the performer is going to render. It's the most unappreciated thing. The tabla person gets their time in the sun. <laughs> the uh, musician takes a water break drink some water, put some cough lozenges and all that. And the tabla player goes and then the musician shows the tabla player to the audience. Look at this accompanist. Give him her their due. Give them their due. And everybody claps wildly. And there is a violin, and the violin player also gets time in the spotlight. And then sometimes they, uh, they dialogue. Sometimes they have a duet when the musician is looking upon them happily, beaming upon them happily. You should go to a concert. It's really nice to see all these things. The musician is beaming upon them, saying, oh, this is my team. Look at them. Look at how wonderful they are. It's they who make me, uh, make my music embellished. Give them some love. Give them some claps, some appreciation. 
poor Tan Pura player. <laughs> Musician never says, ah, and we have the Tan Pura player. In fact, he, he or she sits a little bit behind us. Tabla player and everybody, Mridangam, there is this pot which is played. You know? Mridanga, Ghatta, all these players will sit in, right on the side. Tanpura player, little bit in the back. Tanpura player never gets a place in the sun. Only at the very end. Oh, by the way, <laughs> afterthought. <laughs> so and so on the Tanpura. And all the nice shawls, you know, the, the, the organizers of the conference will have one mala, one bouquet, and one shawl to be given to each person. And I have noticed many times, the, the drabest and the leftover shawl. Yeah, you have to think, look at these things, yeah. The last thought, after thought shawl. Oh, by the way, okay, fine. Last but not the least. <laughs> Tanpura player, yeah. But I tell you, Without the Tanpura, the musician will not. The Tanpura player, the Tanpura uh, uh, Shruti gives the musician great improv abilities. To be able to hit the ornate notes, the notes in between and beyond, to go beyond the raga is possible only when the ragas, the contours of the raga are, are there. When there is a structure, then only I can go beyond the structure. Otherwise, it's anarchy. It's not music, it's cacophony. Sometimes they will introduce some other note which does not even belong to the raga. They will introduce. And then it, the, the, the audience goes wild because the audience is also knowledgeable. And they go wild. They say, oh, how did this... <laughs> This, this note come here, it didn't even belong here, but then it has embellished the raga and it has made it so special. It's associated with that musician's ability to bring in this. All this is possible because the background, Tanpura, I am, I am, I am, the I am, very quickly, unless one is sitting there and thinking the I thought, is, 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 is not aware of that I am. The I am is often relegated to the background because I am busy playing with the notes. Yes, sometimes dangerous notes. <laughs> I'm busy playing music. Sad songs I'm playing. <laughs> Crying songs. Samsara song. What's the samsara song? I am unhappy, you are unhappy, we are all unhappy. Misery loves company. This kind of song I'm playing. Darshan kab doge. Yes, really. Bhagavan needs some cough lozenges because if you keep saying why, <laughs> you know, if you keep saying when are you going to show me darshan? When are you going to show me where you are, how you are? Bhagavan is already hoarse, has cried himself, herself hoarse, saying I am right here as you, in you, in everything that is there. also in the rock. So now from Chetana things, we go to Jada things. Jada means what? Inert. Chetana, opposite of inert, hurt. Yeah? <laughs> Sentient. <laughs> Sentient things. Yeah, because English is a confusing language. Inexplicable, explicable. So you, you see there is that. Yeah. In is a negative particle. Sometimes. Sometimes not. Very arbitrary. Unlike Sanskrit. Always predictable. <laughs> I try to sell Sanskrit whenever possible. <laughs> I have ticked off my job for the day. <laughs> yes. 
So, asmi bhami, even in the rock, it is there. But the absence of the medium of expression in the form of the subtle body, it cannot say, I am Satchidan. So, aham asmi, sada bhami. The I, I-ness, am-ness, is always in the background. It is surmised through the presence and the cognition of other things. For example, if I say this is fruit, mango, this is mango, then mango's presence, even though I am declaring the presence of the mango, right? I am the one who is saying this is mango. Amra phalam idam. This is mango. I am the one who is saying that. But what is the tanpura in the background? I exist. I am. And I am of the nature of knowledge. Knowledge of what? Mango. Not only knowledge of mango, knowledge of what is mango, but the knowledge of the existence of this thing called mango right here, right now. So the background, I exist, must always be there. But then it is it is always there. But often it is forgotten. Meaning it's not really in the foreground. But without its presence, nothing can be recognized. No cognition can take place. The cognition of objects, in other words, is dependent upon completely the presence, the existence of the subject. What kind of existence does the subject enjoy? Self-effulgent existence. So let me repeat that. The cognition of objects is dependent upon the existence and the self-cognition of the subject. So the existence and the cognition of objects is dependent upon I who is self-existence and self-cognized. Therefore, Descartes was wrong. Thankfully, he understood he was wrong. I am, therefore I can think, he said later on. Before he said what? I think, therefore I am. What's wrong with that? In sleep, he ceases to exist because he doesn't have any thoughts. <laughs> Hello, Mr. Descartes. Would you like some coffee? I don't think so. So when, when he said, I don't think, he stopped existing. <laughs> so the I has to be there, always. Otherwise, the whole world is as good as not there. And that's the truth. Even in sleep, the whole world is as good as non-existent because I am not there to cognize it. I means the consciousness, conscious principle. So even though there are so many bodies and minds in the world, only one I. The I, which is talked about here in the verse number two, is the same in me as in you, as in the rock, as in the dog, as in the cat, as in as in the black hole, as in another galaxy, as in the rain, as in the sun, as in the air that we breathe, everything. It's the same I, sentient and, which is pervading sentient and insentient things. When? Always. Always. This is what is declared in the opening mantra of the Chandogya Upanishad. Hey, Somya, oh dear one, Uddalaka is teaching his own son, Shweta Ketu. Oh dear one, dear boy, what? Idam Jagat, this Jagat, Asit, was. Idam Agre, Idam Jagat, Idam means Jagat. That which is cognized is called Idam. 
cognized through a means of knowledge is the world of idam, 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 completely diametrically opposed to aham, which is self-cognized. Hey, Shweta Keto, idam jagat, agre asit, it was there even in the beginning, before it diversified, before it became, quote-unquote, became, many names and many forms, it was there. What does that mean? This jagat, before it was there, it was there. <laughs> Only Upanishad can get away with by saying that. <laughs> Making Vedanta teachers work extra hard to explain all this. <laughs> These tacharyas have it very easy. No? They just tell one riddle and go away. Yeah. <laughs> one teacher said, one Zen master said to the disciple, what's in your left hand? He was carrying a lamp in his left hand. Shishya. Lamp, sir. Drop it. Drop, sir. What's in your right hand? Nothing, sir. Drop it. Teacher went away. <laughs> Sit and think. Till the cows come home. But in a way, it's good. This is good because there is nothing left for the imagination. It's impossible to come to the wrong conclusion. And we still sit here and wonder how the ancient Nayayikas and uh, what are their uh, brothers? Vaisheshikas. Vaisheshikas. Various kinds of logicians who were very handy. If they had been alive today, they would have all got PhDs. Yes. <laughs> and been studying, say, teaching in academia. Okay, in academia. <laughs> Very heady people, always into proof and logic. And so this fellow says, I'm not digressing, it is important here. Yeah, trust me. <laughs> <laughs> so, <laughs> so the logician, Vaisheshika, and his cousin, Nayayika, they all come here and say, in sleep, one is alert. Jada. <laughs> one is as good as a dead body. And it's the same thing. So you can't say, they will not say, aha, must be sada bhami. They will not say that. Because where is the proof in sleep I am there? They will go like this. They won't understand the simple fact, which is very, very easy to grasp, that you don't need, require proof. There are two kinds of uh, things, if we can call things, entities, in the world. One group of entities, which is everything other than you, requires proof, which you deploy which you cognize, you are self-proven existence. They don't understand that. So then they scratch their heads and just get into just this, all this, get all twisted up to explain what happens in sleep. They say, Jada Tattva predominates the inert principle <laughs> in sleep. Ayo Rama. One wonders, with this kind of a clear teaching in the Chandogya Upanishad and everything, how can one go away with this kind of conclusions, confused conclusions, and not to be outdone? The Purva Mimamsaka says, Purva Mimamsaka means like somebody who is just into karma and all these things. And that fellow says, what does that fellow says? Well... We can't say it's inert because if you poke a sleeping person, <laughs> they will go, ah, and turn over. Yeah. Even this uh, Ravana's brother, what was his name? Kumbhakarana. Kumbhakarana had sleep uh, ordained by Lord Shiva, so it was like a terrible sleep, hibernation for six months. And to wake him up, he was as good as dead. He, you know, Inert principle prevailed really in his in his case. Was near impossible to wake him up. And he was a huge fellow. When he was sleeping, it was he could be confused for a small mountain. 
Yes. He was that big. So they had to take some, it's all there in the Ramayana. <laughs> some things I do make, but mostly it is there. Yeah. <laughs> So they had to get ladders. One ladder was not enough. They had to tie two ladders, three ladders together to reach his ears. First they tried a megaphone. Wake up! <laughs> Nothing. Then Ravana, the, who was presiding, said, no, he's the commander-in-chief. He has to be woken up. Think of some drastic measures. He was so big, his ear was like a big cauldron. Huge cauldron whose depths you cannot imagine. And we are just talking of the outer ear. Okay? And so all the oil sellers in Sri Lanka were called. They were all summoned, ajao, ajao. And the oil was heated up. Because hot oil has to be poured. And it took the entire army which was supposed to be training <laughs> for this war and, you know, going rah, rah, rah to be able to get some <laughs> to justify this wrong war after having kidnapped Sita for no reason. No reason at all. Because he, he, Ravana had a wife that looked exactly like Sita. Exactly. She was a doppelganger to the Sita. What was her name? Mandodari. She was a Rajasthani lady. Yes, there is Mandor in Rajasthan. You go there and there is a big shrine to this very devout and dharmic wife. She just said, I have nothing to do with this. They were very much alike. The only way you could tell them apart, the Ramayana says, is to look at the sole of the feet. Sita's foot had a lotus. Mark, lotus mark. And then Mandodari's foot had a bird, maybe a crow or something like that. But I digress. Now back to waking up. <laughs> Ravana. All the oil sellers were called. And cauldron after cauldron of oil, hot oil was keeping on being poured after climbing those precarious ladders. And then after the hottest and the last batch of oil was poured, finally Ramana, uh, Kumbhakarna went, ah, turned his head, causing the first oil spill in history. <laughs> so then the Purva Mimamsaka cannot say inert principle because if you poke a sleeping person, they will go out. So he said, okay. Partially inert <laughs> and partially sentient. Really crazy. Totally crazy. All this has to be critiqued. It's so just total waste of time. It's called some kind, you know, when not what is inside the skull, but the skull itself starts to think. We have to be worried. <laughs> skull is inert. <laughs> or sentient. What's inside the skull? The skull is there to protect what is inside. But the buddhi here is not thinking. The skull is thinking. It's called kapola kalpita. Kapola means skull. Kapala kalpita. So, therefore, Shweta Ketu here is told, this jagat was present. Was doesn't mean is not present now. Is present now also. The same Sat is present now. This Jagat was present in the form of Sat. Existence. It was existent. Existence itself. And this existence now. Why to use the past tense was? Not to confuse. This existence now is a variegated existence. That time, avyakrita, non-variegated existence. Now it is a variegated existence. And then later on, maybe when the karmas of the jivas expire, then it will again become what? Non-variegated existence. But existence does not change. Just like you in sleep, 
was the jagat as such. Understand? Same thing. Macro, micro. This is just so beautiful. Ahamasmi sadabhami. If this much is understood, I will dare go forward. Kadachit <laughs> at any time. Aham na apriya. What is forever is forever beloved and is never a cause of displeasure. What is time bound is a cause of displeasure. Because it's not behaving according to my expectations. <laughs> so this is what now again I go. Then let's say keep it here tomorrow also. And go. Then after eight days, just go. That's <laughs> go. So then when it is just a uh, heap of man gone now, not man go, and it is a heap of just rot, rotten fruit. In fact, the word fruit itself means that which is subject to rotting. Phalgutaya liyate iti phalam. Very nice derivation. Vyutpatti. The meaning of each word in Sanskrit is there in the word itself. Very, very nice. And so, rotten. To the rotten fruit. Keep on, you know, seeing this rotten, rotten, rotten fruit is the cause of what? Displeasure, right? So how can you say sada uh, aham na apriya? Sada chit means sada at any time. I am not the cause of, I am never displeased. In relation to this rotten fruit, I am displeased. Sometimes this happens. You buy a fruit from the market. Sometimes mango because you don't know what's happening inside. There's one variety of mango which is a little disturbing. But uh, in India, you cut through it and a small moth flies out. Yeah, a small insect flies. It's not even that small. It's a little it's this big. Like a kind of a thing flies out. Shvetaja. You know, it was just born right there in that uh, atmosphere. And it was living in the form of a cocoon. So when that mango comes to the market, one is very, very wary of cutting it. You cut it far away from you. Or sometimes it doesn't fly out. It's there. It hasn't made it. It's dead. Sometimes it's still in the pupa stage. And I know what you're thinking. And still you eat that? Yes. <laughs> Carefully. Yeah. Yeah. What's its name? I don't know. Neelam, I think it's name. Neelam. Yeah. So, yeah, some, this, this I'm not making up. Otherwise, okay. yeah. I wouldn't have known the name of it. Yeah. So, so, how do you say it is? Uh, is this, this causes displeasure when I cut the mango and the, the moth flies into my face. I've had that experience. Okay, yeah. It's quite distasteful. So how do you say aham na apriya? Because the absence of the moth is very dear to me. <laughs> absence of many creepy crawly things, dear to me. Absence of rotten fruit, dear to me. So what is not dear is not at the level of the eye for marthika. The order of reality that is the absolute, which is beyond ragadveshas. What is dear and non-dear is merely on the level of the upadhi, preferences, raga and prejudices, dvesha. On that level, there is good, bad, not nice, nice, tasty and not tasty, delicious and terrible. How can something be delicious and terrible? Acquaint yourself with a fruit called 
He was leading a meditation. Some people came late and brought an offering of a big plate of guriyal and kept it right at the feet of the teacher. <laughs> Sat down to meditate. Whole room full of people are meditating. And even a saint like him could not stand this man. <laughs> he had to stop the meditation and ask them to take away the fruit basket outside till the meditation was complete. Then I understood the, that the, the, there is a mispronunciation. It should be Duriya. Duriya means distance. <laughs> That's how it is. So then, but some people just, what is that? They just, they can't wait to get near it. They absolutely love it. It's the best thing for them. You don't, they don't even need food. If you just give them a basket of durian, they'll be very happy. But this preference is at the level of what? Body, mind, senses. The I is not the subject matter of displeasure ever. Why? More we'll see in half an hour. Om Pur Namada Pur Namidam Pur Nar Pur Namachate Pur Nasya Pur Namadaya Pur Nameva Vashishate Om Shanti 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 Hari Hi Om Shri Guru Hari Hi Om We just uh, stop the recording and no need to close it. You can